So I've not mastered life yet for some reason. I think I can. My name is Brandon and I've wanted nothing more than to be a husband and a father. Now a husband and a father. I realize how terrible I am at it. And not just at that, but life in general. I'm currently a seminary student working towards a doctorate, but I don't want to be a pastor, nor do I want to teach at a seminary. I honestly don't know what I want to do, but I like writing and podcasting. So I'm going to take this step of faith in and put myself out there. So listen and laugh with or at me as I attempt to endure life's constant slap upside the head from calling out my wife on her BS to being guilty of the same thing. I'll be discussing a range of topics about life in order to have genuine talks about our screw-ups. The goal is to grow and mature while having some fun in between. Join the conversation every month with people from different walks of life to discuss how we're doing it wrong. Life better is. Money be the worst. Be no equal. See the people wait before the purse. Do it, 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 do it. Grace and peace, grace and peace. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of You're Doing It Wrong. My name is uh, Brandon. Last month, I had the honor and privilege of having my brothers Jamel and, and Elder Lee just having a discussion on uh, fatherhood. Just a really, really great discussion. I had finished editing that video and just they, they did a phenomenal job just opening up, being vulnerable and transparent and just, just had a really good time just, just enjoying these, these brothers' uh, um, experience and wisdom and just, just a lot of wisdom going on. So if you haven't had an opportunity to check it out, please do. On Spotify, iTunes, the visuals are on uh, uh, YouTube. But this month, I am I am very very honored and blessed to to have some more special guests here um, with me today, uh, Miss Shanetta and Miss Paula Lee. Just uh, here to continue that conversation. You know, I was I was making a joke too because these are coming out. I'm recording a month ahead. And it would have been wise to like do this around Mother's Day and record it then, but you know, <laughs> you know how things go. I guess I'm on brand doing it wrong, but it's still a, a universal conversation and a good one to have. So I'm just excited to to discuss motherhood um, with these individuals today. And uh, like I said, I'm not gonna hold you guys too much. We're gonna jump right in. Um, but how are you guys doing today? Start with you, Ushin. How are you? I'm good. good. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. And thank you for inviting us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How about you? I'm Ms. Paula. How, about, how are you doing today? Today is a good day. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. <laughs> it's hot. It's yes. hot. Oh, it's hot. It's Very definitely hot. hot. Um, yeah. And, and what, I wanted to start this conversation um, here because I had a conversation with your husbands last or two months ago, mm -hmm. and it and went really well. And, and when you guys inform me that hey we would love to have a conversation mm -hmm. on mother i was like man that that was uh, really cool and i'm i like to think well i am an overthinker and i was like how am i going to introduce them and, and i found myself wrestling with this idea of introducing you as such and such as wives mm -hmm. and i had to catch myself because i'm like why do i have to introduce them as such and such wives because they can stand on their mm -hmm. own merit mm -hmm. and i feel like uh, with a lot of women they're just kind of viewed as just either wives or just as, as mothers. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's a stigma that kind of only happens to women. It doesn't really mm -hmm. happen to men. Because even thinking back on my childhood, I just kind of viewed my mother just as my mother mm -hmm. and not as if she had a life outside yeah. mm -hmm. of that. So um, I just wanted to open up and, and start from there. Like, has that been a struggle? Do you see that just common, that women are just kind of viewed, kind of put in that box mm -hmm. and can't have a life outside of just being a wife? And, yeah. and a mother and I start with you, Shana. What, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? So um, I definitely think that that is a universal uh, kind of controversy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that especially in spaces of faith, I think that, um, you know, some women are taught or some women, you know, believe that being a mother is their identity. Mm -hmm. That that is, that's what they, they were raised to be. That's what they were raised to strive to be. Um, and I think that um, having a six-month-old son, um, that was something that um, I even kind of wrestled with. Um, you know, when he was born, you know, I've always kind of been 
um, very outgoing. I've always been like, you know, a creative. And um, I think that when he was born and I was at home on maternity leave, you know, I found myself like, you know, who who am I becoming? <laughs> you know, who is this person? Um, you know, what happened to my dreams? You know, what happened to, um, you know, this career that I worked so hard for? Um, and there was some, some inappropriate guilt there. Mm. There was some guilt. Um, and it was, you know, wow, I feel bad about, you know, wanting to go back to work. Um, so I definitely think that, um, you know, even having my own business and empowering women, um, I think that that is definitely a ongoing conversation about, um, you know, who women are, what their identity is. Um, and I think that a lot of women um, and mothers um, do struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. What about you, Aunt Paula? Definitely identify. I've been there with that one. <laughs> um, as a young mom, that mm -hmm. was, I, well, I always wanted to be a wife and a mm -hmm. mom. When people used to ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say a wife and a mom. They're like, okay, but what else do you want to be? I'm, as if that wasn't noble. Mm -hmm. And so I, I never understood why people didn't think like that was enough. Yeah. You know, so then I became a wife and a mom. And then like mm -hmm. you, you know, baby number one. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. and then people would say, "Oh, look at you and your little family. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're William's mm -hmm. wife. Oh, you're such mm -hmm. and such as mom." And I remember thinking one day inside my head, like, "I'm Paula. Mm -hmm. I have a name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a name." Mm -hmm. And so it was really frustrating mm -hmm. for a long while until I went back and and grabbed me again. Mm -hmm. You really have to grab yourself mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Um, and as you add more children, you know, yes. you have to recreate, mm -hmm. like you said, becoming. Yep. That's a mm -hmm. very appropriate word. You, yeah. You're always becoming because mm -hmm. you're always transitioning. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, I have become a grandma. Mm -hmm. So that even has changed the mm -hmm. dynamic of how I move, what I say, what I do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. At this point in my life, though, I'm, <laughs> and there comes a point <laughs> where you don't care if yeah. somebody says, oh, you're William Lee's wife. Yeah. But mm -hmm. when you're in those early stages, mm -hmm. it's really, it is it is a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where did you learn to, to value that? Is it kind of a, a generational thing? Because, again, I guess me and Jeanette are in the mm -hmm. same it, millennial. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's kind of like a foreign concept where, hey, my desire is to be a wife and a mother mm -hmm. and most people would kind of view that as like old fashioned or mm -hmm. I want to because mm -hmm. I guess now I think even the statistic is like you know the majority of uh, black women there's a high percentage of black women yeah. graduating um, college mm -hmm. so they're more career oriented mm -hmm. woman um, but what was who instilled that in you or is it just something that you always wanted did you see that example set before you well mm -hmm. I knew that my mom I knew that that had been my mother's desire and mm -hmm. she wasn't able to fulfill mm -hmm. that um, but more importantly, I think it was God's plan for me. And mm. so I feel mm -hmm. like that was innate because even in my generation, that was very key. I'm a 60s baby. So mm. we're talking, you know, you can bring home the bacon, fry it up mm. in a pan, never let your husband forget he's a man because you're a woman. Mm. You know, so that mm -hmm. was a thing as I was yeah. growing up. And mm -hmm. so that was why I got the comment, like, why would you want to stay home and yeah. raise kids? Yeah. Because everybody was mm -hmm. that, striving to go mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. So I was an, I was an anomaly yeah. and that was hard. Mm -hmm. And I think for yeah. me, um, my upbringing was very, very different. So um, growing up, um, and I've you know shared this on many platforms, um, my mother was married and divorced several times. And as a result, um, I was raised um, by single women um, a single grandmother, very strong alpha um, mm -hmm. women. Um, and so growing up, marriage and motherhood was not really something that I strive to be. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. let's go get this money, let's get a career, travel the world. I mean, it was, you know, um, that just wasn't something that was kind of on my, my mind or mm -hmm. something that I strive to be. It was definitely something I've always wanted, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't necessarily, um, I don't know, I just had a different perspective about it. Um, so growing up and even, you know, when I met my husband, um, you know, I was in graduate school at the time and I was like, Oh, I'm about to go get my PhD. Like I'm, Ooh, I'm, you know, just out here living it up. <laughs> and, and, um, so when we got married, um, and when I, you know, had a baby, you know, that was when I was just like, wow, like, you know, who, who am I becoming? Mm -hmm. But I think that, um, what really reminds me of my identity and while I was at home, you know, for those three months was really getting into the word. Mm -hmm. Um, and and, you know, God really reminded me that I'm a daughter first. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So you spoke on, on guilt. How did you 
overcome that guilt? Is it something that you still yeah. struggle with? Because like you said, you get to stay home mm-hmm. with your son and then it's like, man, I have to go back. Yeah. How did you wrestle with that guilt? Or is it something that you're still wrestling with? No, um, so I think that what, how I was able to overcome that was shifting the perspective to what will my children think of me? Mm-hmm. Um, Judah, my son, will say, wow, you know, regardless of the decisions that my mother made, um, she did her best in mm-hmm. raising me. Um, so my desire to go back to work or even if I chose to stay at home, my children wouldn't think of me any different. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm still a mother um, and I'm still, you know, striving, you know, after God. So for me, my inappropriate guilt was just more of my own internal thing. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that also came, you know, from being in spaces of faith, um, you know, knowing a lot of different women. I was like, you know, wow, this staying at home thing. Like, I think I could do this. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, oh. <laughs> I said, oh, Jesus. Um, it's more than a notion. Yes, it is. And, you know, to that, now that I have a child and now that I have been home for a couple of months, I have a new level of respect for women who and new level of respect for mothers who do stay at home, um, who are breastfeed. I mean, it's just a different array of things to have a respect for with, with mothers. Um, so, yeah. No, and, and, and talking about this idea of identity from the mm-hmm. outside looking in, I'm able to see like certain um, double standards mm-hmm. that go on um, where I was, I was telling Paula earlier before you got in this idea of like a man cave where a man, once he comes home from work, he, you know, that expectation is he can go and just be to himself. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. where's that time for a woman to yeah. have her woman cave or whatever yeah. you want to mm-hmm. call it? So yeah. how do you guys find time for yourselves? Mm. Let me throw in yeah. something here on um, because that's I want to go back to the identity piece because this kind of is, is a part of this as well. You had an appropriate guilt. Mm-hmm. I had an appropriate identity mm-hmm. because although my mm-hmm. whole plan was to stay at home and raise my kids, when our first daughter was a year old, I was done. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, this is not what I expected. Yeah. All I do is talk to a person who can't talk back. Mm-hmm. It's diapers, more diapers, yeah. nights, more nights. Mm-hmm. And you know, my husband was working 12 hour shifts at the time. So, and we had one car, which means I'm home. Mm-hmm. And so after year one, I said, I think I'm going back to work. <laughs> and he said, well, okay. So I went back to work because I needed that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing a good job. Um, mm-hmm. Here's uh, this is how much salary you're going to get paid. Mm-hmm. I had a skill set, mm-hmm. you know, that I was getting paid for, and you get reviews and performance, and you know, mm-hmm. all of that. And it was the wrong thing for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And my child paid mm-hmm. because I I circumvented what he had for me. He told me to mm-hmm. stay at home, and it was really both of our responsibility for me to determine how to be successful at that. Mm. And and I was in the workforce for about four years mm-hmm. and my daughter had really bad asthma and allergies and it was exacerbated by being in daycare after daycare after mm-hmm. daycare because I was picky. Yeah. I was picky where mm-hmm. I put my child mm-hmm. and I even created... <laughs> you had to fill out an application mm-hmm. to keep my child. Mm-hmm. Like I created one and I would take it in. And if they side eyed me, I took my application to my child and I went home. <laughs> like if you think yeah. this is a joke, this yeah. is my prized possession. Yeah. And God was like, nobody's going to treat her like you. Mm-hmm. If you want her done like that, you need to raise yeah. him yourself. So I was like, so after four years, we bit the bullet, the bullet mm-hmm. and I came back home. And that was where I began my search for how do we do this effectively yeah. because there were other moms who were seeking to do what I was doing mm-hmm. and so now my whole strive is to to help moms who want to do it if mm-hmm. you don't want to do it like I don't ever push being a stay at home yeah. mom on any yeah. woman mm-hmm. because I feel like it's a personal mm-hmm. choice mm-hmm. and so when women say to me well I don't think I could do what you do well yeah mm-hmm. don't don't even try to do what I do yeah. <laughs> like don't because yeah. I'm not gonna try to do what you do right mm-hmm. either so my whole thing is if you want to know I got a whole list mm-hmm. of things for you to be healthy, for your children mm-hmm. to be healthy, for your marriage to be mm-hmm. healthy. That's my stride. But that was because that came from me being disobedient. Yeah. yeah. It really did. And I think, Brandon, too, the flip side of this conversation is that, um, you know, America defines motherhood as giving birth mm. to children. <laughs> um, when we don't really talk about, you know, women, 
I have multiple women who have mothered me. Yeah. Um, so yes, I do have a biological mother, and my mother has done an excellent job. But Paula has mothered me. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of people, uh, whether it be work, mentors, women at church, um, who have poured into me as not only a, a wife but as a mother. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's also, um, you know, and and women who adopt. You know, I mean that that's. Um, that's just something that we don't talk about. That's something that America doesn't think about when they think about motherhood. They Mm -hmm. think about, can you push a baby out? Mm -hmm. When, you know, that's, that's not really the case. Yeah. Yeah. And and Paula, so I'm, I'm listening to you and just see all this passion. And you said, you know, when I had my first kid and, and if people paid attention to the last episode, you guys have seven children. Yeah. And I, like, I, I'm sure you can speak to how mm-hmm. tough it is raising yeah. one child. <laughs> and this child is like, is only two years old. <laughs> You've had seven kids and you still look youthful, vibrant. Mm-hmm. Like you, you still you, have Jesus. things going <laughs> on, you know? You would think someone who's had seven kids, like, I'm not doing nothing. Yeah. You know, just be so She's done great. and just tired. Because mm-hmm. even you're telling me, hey, oh, I've got well, things to do now <laughs> this evening yeah. that you, you still did. have kids who are in the home and you've yeah. got to go and support them. And yeah. I'm just amazed at that and so I can imagine how tired Mm -hmm. (laughs) you can be Mm -hmm. and so I guess going back to the original question how do you find time just for yourself Mm -hmm. I make time yeah I make time Mm -hmm. Um, because if I'm empty I'm not giving I'm giving fumes yeah and nobody That's wants good. to breathe fumes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and fumes are deadly. That's good. And my mm-hmm. fumes are deadly mm-hmm. when I'm tired. So mm-hmm. I make sure that I, I carve out times for me. Um, I was telling you earlier that a lot of times if people call me and I'm like, oh, I'm in my office right now. My office is McDonald's parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I go and get in my head mm-hmm. and get in the word. Mm-hmm. And Jesus and I have conversations. Yeah. And this is so that when mm-hmm. I meet everybody else that I'm going to encounter in my day, mm-hmm. I'm not empty. Yeah. And I'm still able and ready to give. And I've, um, after I turned 40 um, was when I decided it would be a good idea for me to take care of my health. Yeah. <laughs> so I do carve out time to also work mm-hmm. out. Um, and I encourage other people to work out. Um, I'm an ex-fluffy chick. Um, mm-hmm. And so <laughs> I know what it's like to be mm-hmm. a heavy woman. And, mm-hmm. you know, to have had a bunch of babies yeah. and 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 not make that time to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, you know, I woke up one day and I'm like, I need to be alive for all these kids. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's not fair to them yeah. to lose me because I didn't take care mm-hmm. of me. So it isn't just about me having me time. Yeah. My me time isn't just about me. Yeah. It's about my my husband, my children, the people that I mentor, the yeah. people that I counsel, the people that I encounter in the grocery store, mm-hmm. the key people that I encounter on the highways and byways. It's about everybody. Yeah. It isn't just about yeah. me. And so if I can get women to understand that your me time is important and it's not a selfish thing, Mm -hmm. unless you're making it a selfish Mm -hmm. thing. Like if your me time is you spend six hours on the couch eating bonbons, which is what people used to think of stay at home mothering, Mm -hmm. then yeah, your me time is being squandered. But if it's useful and and beneficial and fruitful and profitable, Mm -hmm. then you need to make it. Yeah. You have to make it. Yeah. It needs to be a priority. Yeah. 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 And so you spoke about being like intentional. I would assume it's the same thing with your dreams because you mentioned having dreams outside of just being, you yeah. know, um, a mother and a wife. And I know you're you already you probably don't you have an event coming up this Saturday? This Saturday. Yeah, you know? So you know, I guess speak to your dreams and how balancing that and yeah. I guess what are those dreams yeah. that, that you have? So um <laughs> for for me, as long as I have remembered, I've always had a burden for women. That's just always been my thing. Um, and so as I became an adult, um, and when, you know, my husband and I got married, um, I realized that there were a lot of, um, there was just a lack of resources for wives in spaces of faith. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that is how, you know, the Bonafide Wife came about. And, um, I started that, you know, group with, it was three women and, um, now there's over 60. So, (laughs) um, so I would love to do that full time. I would love to travel the world to empower women and wives of faith full time. Um, and if I'm honest, balancing my time and being intentional about my dreams is an area of growth. Mm-hmm. Um, that is an area of growth for me because 
when I give, when I serve, when I work, I give it a thousand. And sometimes I don't know how to turn that a thousand off. Um, (laughs) So now um, that I'm out for the summer, now that school is out, uh, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to understand that rest is better than productivity. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. And what about you, Paula? What are some of your dreams and and things that you have? It's interesting. That's an interesting question because Mm -hmm. my dream if you ever read um, my signage on emails or text message, it says living the dream, mm-hmm. Paula, living the dream, fulfilling the call. My dream was to be a wife and a mom. Mm-hmm. I'm living my dream. Mm-hmm. I'm fulfilling that call. Mm-hmm. And so at this point in my life, God is calling me to really, we have the same vision, mm-hmm. which is, and, it's, and I've always mm-hmm. had a vision to help women, um, moms specifically, wives mm-hmm. specifically, but any any woman, but that's kind of like my, my wheelhouse mm-hmm. and always has been. Um, And for years, people have been saying, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. You need to write this down. Your family is crazy. Your family is (laughs) special. You got all this stuff going on. And I'm like, nobody wants to read my story. Mm. And then the Lord one day said, it's time. Mm. So I have penned it. It, um, And now I am praying for the resources to publish it. Um, And and I know that I will be speaking on the circuit as Mm. well to um, women just to really just to encourage them Mm -hmm. and to empower them Mm -hmm. the exact same thing Mm -hmm. because I want to see women um, receive the help that they Mm -hmm. need for their health body soul mind and spirit Mm -hmm. so that they can have hope to continue in this Mm -hmm. calling because Mm -hmm. whether you work inside your home or outside your home whether you gave birth or you adopted Mm -hmm. or you whatever Mm -hmm. it is whatever your station is it's a calling yeah Mm -hmm. and It takes a lot of work to do this calling Mm -hmm. well. I mean, you have a lot of women who do it. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, as long as you've given it your best shot, Mm -hmm. that's really all anybody can ask. But I'd like you, I'd Mm -hmm. like to see more resources. Like Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to be able to touch a woman to Mm -hmm. have her talk to me. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for an older woman who, who's ahead of me. Yeah five, 10 years Mm -hmm. in some station of her life to be able to speak to me, speak into my life and say, Hey, you know, I had grown kids too. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is what happened or, you know, this is what I do with my grandchildren. I never been a grandma before, you know, I mean, I have three grandchildren at this point, but this is, you know, still uncharted Mm -hmm. territory. My Mm -hmm. oldest grandchild is eight. So as I watch him becoming, like I'm looking at him now and I'm saying, he's on the precipice of preteen like Mm. I can see that now and I know I need to handle him differently I need to my relationship with him needs to change a little bit um but I'd love to talk to another grandma who's you know just that much ahead of Mm -hmm. me say what did you do how did you do this you know we need to be there for each other Mm -hmm. whatever the stage of life and Mm -hmm. I don't even necessarily mean oh she doesn't have to be older than me but if she's in a if she's ahead of me in what area she's a whatever area she's ahead of me I need her Yeah. yeah and we need each other yeah well, I definitely want to make sure I say congrats because it sounds like you guys are not just mm-hmm. having these dreams, but actually living them out. Mm-hmm. Um, so congrats to that. Because, again, I wanted to make sure that even though I'm not a, a, a mother, I can look from the outside mm-hmm. in and just see that double standard that gets put on women or mothers. Oh, yeah. And just realizing that my wife isn't just my wife. She isn't mm-hmm. just, you know, um, Autumn's mother and that mm-hmm. she's got a life. She's got dreams yep. um, outside of that and wanted to make sure that, that I touched on, on that and and just I thought you guys did, did a great job. Um, but I, that, that led me to just wanting to have a discussion on expectations yeah. when when you are a mother and just having, and I think you can, we both can speak to it mm-hmm. just because our kids are so young and just mm-hmm. have this idea of, man, I want my kids to do X, Y, and yeah. Z and do this. And I think, um, uh, um, Paula, as your kids get older, you're like, how how they just veer or mm-hmm. maybe they did do as, as you mm-hmm. had expected. Like for me, um, my expectation, I've got a daughter, Autumn, and I, just from my experience, I've seen a lot of um, women take a back seat when it comes to theology. And it's like mm-hmm. the men who knows a lot of theology and, and can have the conversations about the mm-hmm. Bible and stuff like that where – and I don't mean to sound this away, but like the one may just know like a surface level yeah. thing. And it's like, I don't want that for my wife. I don't want that for, yeah. for my daughter. I want them to be just as mm-hmm. knowledgeable mm-hmm. Um, as I am. But the reality is she's almost turning three and it's like, what am I doing right now yeah. <laughs> to, to actually mm-hmm. be instilling these things? So even I can see having that goal, having that expectation. And the reality is that I even dropped the ball mm-hmm. in, in that arena and just yeah. being really willing to acknowledge that and hopefully mm-hmm. grow and mature. Mm-hmm. But what are some expectations that yeah. you have? Um, as a mother 
Yeah, I think um, my husband and I always have these conversations about who Judah and our other children will grow up to be. Um, you know, and we, you know, we've talked about, you know, like just the other day was a commercial um, we were watching TV, and um, you know, we said, "Wow, we hope that when Judah goes to school." that if someone doesn't have lunch that he would give them lunch mm -hmm. you know and we talked about all these different scenarios um but i think that above all else i think that we want him to know who jesus is mm -hmm. and i think that um even for me at his school um i've talked to a lot of moms about you know how they're you know doing this with the baby how they're doing this with the baby um and i think that sometimes we can lose sight of what discipleship is um within our home with the baby. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think that for me, I don't expect anything from my children. Yeah. I think that, um, I think that I expect God to chase them down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good one. Um, you know, I, I don't really, um, you know, expect anything from them. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, of course, you know, I will, we would want them to, you know, go out and, you know, be, you know, the offsprings of us, you know, but um, I hope that they will, um, you know, implement what we've taught them. Um, but I think that, um, you know, we just want them, you know, to be saved and to, just to live a life that glorifies God. What about you, Paul? Mm -hmm. um, my expectations weren't so much for them as it was for God mm -hmm. to just be faithful to me as a mom and to lead and guide me and direct me with each child individually yeah. mm -hmm. and not to lump them together, even though we call ourselves Lee unit. Um, <laughs> each one of them is very individual. Yeah. Um, and so my whole thrust was to really brainwash them. Jesus, whatever that looked like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have been accused and I do use that word accused of brainwashing. Then I'm like, absolutely. It's either me or you. So <laughs> I choose me. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and so that that's been our thrust is to, to steer them towards mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. in, in how we act, mm -hmm. how William and I treat each other, how we respond to them. Um, when we see ourselves in them yes. mm -hmm. and then we have to say, okay, God, like there's been so many times where I've been disciplining a child and I'll hear the Holy Spirit say, <clears throat> that's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I have to like back up and, and, and admit that mm -hmm. to that child. Like, this is me. Mm -hmm. I understand you see this in me. I know you do. And I apologize that, that you see this in yeah. me. I'm working on it. I need you to pray for me. I'm gonna pray for you, yeah. but you still have to obey me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I'm pointing them ultimately to mm -hmm. a savior, yeah. you know? And so if they, I feel like if they can see me apologize and mm -hmm. if they can see that I am not perfect and they can come to me and I've always had an open door with them, come to me, that come correct yeah but you can always come to me and talk to me mm -hmm. about anything mm -hmm. and i'm so thankful that on this side most of our children are grown um that they've come back and they're like thank you and dad so yeah. much for you know how you did this or how you did that or how you didn't allow us to do this or how you sacrificed on this end and how you know i'm like we're hearing mm -hmm. these words verbalized to us and it has made the journey in most cases, on most days, very worth <laughs> yeah. it. You know, there's some days where I'm like, what have we done? Yeah. But overall, you know, we can just see, you know, that, that God has got them. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and there are times where we see them going left and we're going, uh oh. Yeah. Oh gosh, Lord, get them, get them, get them, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Get them, Jesus. And then we have to pray. Do we say? Do we not say? Mm -hmm. And so, our again, going back to your question, our expectations are God, lead mm -hmm. me and guide me with each one yes. individually yeah. and it doesn't change just yeah. because they're adults it does not mm -hmm. change that prayer is still the same that's good mm -hmm. and you spoke about not being perfect and i think <laughs> mm. i'm talking about how we had expectations on our kids but i think even the expectation on us as parents is that we've got to get everything yeah. right hmm. you know how is that when you realize that and i just haven't gotten things right i don't yeah. know if you have any like any personal stories or or anything that you can share that man I just realized that hey I'm, I'm gonna mess up and I'm yeah. gonna be okay with that I'm yeah. gonna have to learn and grow and there's there's gonna be there has to be room for grace yeah. for myself that I can't be so hard on, on myself I don't know if you've had that mm. I mean I think <clears throat> that's daily mm. <laughs> but that's I think I think that's daily but I think um 
I think even labor, my labor was, you know, I, I had this, I wanted this natural birth. <laughs> oh, I was gonna do it with no medication. Oh, I went to seven centimeter. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, come on. We're gonna, we gonna have to do this. We're the drugs. Right? <laughs> because, you know, for me giving birth, the, the, the status of perfection mm. was I was gonna have this water birth. It was mm. gonna be, I was gonna have this spiritual experience with God. <laughs> and you know, I was gonna do it with no medication. <laughs> and while I did it for over 12 hours, you know, um, baby's heart rate started dropping. So I had to get an epidural. And um, I remember crying. <laughs> I remember crying. I was like, I got an epidural. Like, I'm horrible. Like, I'm a horrible mother. Like, you know, and people were looking at me like, girl, do you know how many come in, people come here and get drugs every day? Guilt but, number one. Yeah. <laughs> number one guilt. First guilt of motherhood right, right there. So yeah. before he was even born, yes. I had this expectation that you know I was gonna do everything by the book mm -hmm. everything was gonna be perfect and that was what to me it was distorted but to me that was my idea of what my natural labor birth experience was um, but I think that's daily you know I mm -hmm. think it's daily that um, I'm reminded that this is not perfect mm -hmm. You know, whether, you know, he blow out his diapers or, <laughs> you know, we spill milk or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it can't, motherhood is not perfect. Mm -hmm. We can't, it can't be. It can't be. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And the, going back to the, the labor piece, I think that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. um, I felt the same way too. And I was um, 20 mm -hmm. when I had my first, uh, almost 21 when I had my first child. Uh, actually, I was 21. Three days later, I, uh, <laughs> three days before I turned 21, and because I was young, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a breeze. Yeah. I go in the hospital, and then I have to get the epidural, and mm -hmm. 64 hours later in a C-section, yeah. here she come. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and ever since then, I've been an epidural poster yeah. child, though, so like, I would go in like waiting for my epidural yeah. because I felt like there's no shame in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's Absolutely. no shame in this, and you don't know what you don't mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. number one, and number two, mm -hmm. there is one one perfect parent and we are not mm -hmm. that none mm -hmm. of us Jesus is the only perfect yep. parent so I think we have to really allow you know the grace piece and I've asked my children you know to extend grace to me mm -hmm. you know and and have heard them say like with case in point our last two ch <laughs> our last two children we have had ch we had two children in the 80s mm. three children in the 90s two children in the 2000s <laughs> so our poor 2000s children because we are now older yeah. we are very very middle aged um, they're not getting us like those older children got us we don't have the juice anymore yeah. we, just, we just don't have it mm -hmm. um, and so we've apologized to them like guys we are so sorry I know you you know, you came on the tail end of all those fun field trips we used to do mm -hmm. and all the park runs and everything and they're like it's okay mom and dad we, we, we really understand that you guys are just old now mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we 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 have to understand that these are just our limits yeah that's what it is we need them to we need we'd like for them to mm -hmm. extend grace they don't have to yeah but we'd like for them to extend grace and mm -hmm. we make up for it in other ways mm -hmm. and they're going to be they're just going to be times mm -hmm. where you can only do what you can do mm hmm yeah, and I'm I'm glad you brought up that labor piece because as a man, like I can't really Yeah. <laughs> like I was you don't there. Want no, joke. <laughs> no joke. No joke. Yeah, I was there um with with my wife, but it's just like you just see your your, your spouse in just this way and it's like you feel helpless. Yes. Yeah. There's like nothing at all that I can do and just that amount of pressure that mm -hmm. is put on women where it's just like you gotta have everything so yep. natural and you know, don't do no drugs and it's just like <laughs> just just from like you said, he wasn't even born yet mm -hmm. and I had this Guilt. pressure um, as a mother and just dealing with that. But I thought that was just a great um, segue because when I was coming up with topics, I was mm -hmm. like, hey, what are some good things that we can talk about? And yeah. you mentioned infertility and it, it was just like something that, again, as a man that I'm not even yeah. really cognizant of, but as I've been in church, I realized it's such a big thing. Oh yeah. You know, and how thing. many women are struggling, or families I should yeah. say, are, are struggling with that. And again, wanting to have real conversations, but just handle it with the sensitivity that it deserves because mm -hmm. we personally know people yeah. who have gone through these things. Um, and so you have brought up the, the topic. I didn't know yeah. if you were speaking just from your own personal experience mm -hmm. or speaking from people that you've known yeah. and how you've engaged, mm -hmm. how you've ministered mm -hmm. um, to individuals. If this, again, I, I don't know yeah. how, how you wanted to, <laughs> to take that topic. So I have experience with both. Mm. 
So I've never had an infertility diagnosis, but um, certainly when my husband and I um, started trying to conceive, um, it took me over a year. Um, and due to um, me since high school um, being on birth control, um, because I just had a lot of female you know, challenges, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, birth control, you know, kind of when you get off of it, a lot of, you know, women are finding now that when you get off of it, um, it does kind of, you know, mess with, you know, your monthly, mm -hmm. um, and just how your body works. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went through a year of, of wondering, mm -hmm. oh my God, mm -hmm. what if I, you know, never have children. And, um, I also, um, felt guilty because when my husband and I got married, you know, my husband, you know, grew up with siblings. And I'm an only child, so growing, so growing up, I was like, oh no, if I'm if I'm gonna get married, I'm 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 gonna you know have a baby when I'm like 35. You know, I'm not gonna you know have a baby, and so I felt guilty because I was like, oh Lord, you know, now that you know we finally decided to have a baby, now I can't get pregnant. So um, I did have that experience, um, and I had a lot of women walking with me through that. Um, and, you know, of course I prayed and I said, you know, Lord, this is your will. You know, um, I believe that motherhood is a ministry just like marriage is, um, you know, but then there was a transition when I found out I was pregnant and I had friends who do have infertility diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So then I felt guilty Yes, because I was like, oh, here we were walking this thing out together. Right. Now I have to step back. Yeah. You know, and, you know, women were honest with me. They said, Shanana, I, I don't know how to support you because you're pregnant and I can't get pregnant. You know, it's been five years or eight years or whatever. Um, but, I mean, even as a social worker professionally, I work with a lot of people who have infertility um, challenges. And I think that, especially in, in spaces of faith, it's a hard, hard thing to discuss. It's a hard thing to talk about. Um, but I think that I, I definitely wanted us <laughs> to talk about it on, on this forum. Um, because it's something that in spaces of faith we don't discuss. Mm -hmm. We don't really talk about um, what it's like for women to be around, you know, even for our church. You know, we have women who have, like Paula, like seven children. Um, but what about the, the wives who do have empty arms on Mother's Day? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, just every day. And they desire that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember on a Mother's Day at our church, um, my husband asked me to come up when he uh, emceed. Mm -hmm. Um, to talk to the moms on Mother's mm -hmm. Day. And I was like, okay, Lord, well, what do you want me to yeah. say? Because, you know, I personally know a couple of the women who are suffering with infertility, you know, and if you've ever been pregnant, ever, you're a mom. If you've ever conceived, you're a mom. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted that to be um, made known, mm -hmm. you know, to those moms who've dealt with that because that's really, I, mm -hmm. I've never personally dealt with that, but yeah. my heart does mm -hmm. go out. I'm empathetic. Mm -hmm. I will never say, oh, I understand what you're going through. Right. I don't. Right. I don't understand. Right. But I feel like I, I know how to pray. Yeah. I know how to pray and, and I know how to follow up and I know how to, you know, to love on people. So if I can do that from that perspective, mm -hmm. then that's kind of where, yeah. you know, I kind of tuck that mm -hmm. in, but it might not be a bad idea if you have some women on here who, who oh, yeah, speak absolutely. to that, because I'd love to hear about that. And I think for me, you know, I went through months where I took multiple pregnancy tests. I took, and mm -hmm. no one can ever describe the feeling of sitting on the toilet in a bathroom and saying, oh, it's negative, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and it's just, it's heartbreaking, um, you know, to wonder or to ever think. And I experienced that for over a year. Mm -hmm. So I can just imagine Exhausting. women and wives who um, experience that for longer. I just yeah. um, can't fathom that. Um, so, yeah. And then alongside that, because um, along with infertility there, you know, miscarriage yes. is another piece that mm -hmm. I think, you know, could be implemented as well mm -hmm. because it's, I think it's one thing to have never been pregnant, but I think it's also another thing to have miscarried. And mm -hmm. I have had that experience. Um, and this is very interesting. I, I feel like I'm an anomaly in so many areas of my life. And this is another one. My very last child, I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And my whole family was like, you're having twins this time. You're having twins. And I'm like, come on, y'all. We're not having twins. And then I wake up one morning in a pool of blood. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I stand up, and the baby drops out. Mm. And so we go into the um, OB, they put me on the monitor, and they say, here's where baby A was, and here's baby B. And I said, what? They said, oh, you didn't know you were having twins? What? Like, what? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know. And so, um, because I couldn't have a DNC where they go in and scrape the uterus, that means I now have to carry this baby and I, so I bleed yeah. for the whole nine mm -hmm. months and then I go on bed rest mm -hmm. for the rest of the nine months, you know, because yeah. we don't know, yeah. you know, if this baby's even going to hold. Yeah. So I'm going through a whole pregnancy wondering, am I going to lose this one too? Mm -hmm. And so there's that dichotomy of, I lost a baby, but I'm still pregnant. Mm. Like, how do you, how do you, re, like, how do you reason yeah. with that in in yourself? That was really hard mm -hmm. emotionally, mm -hmm. and that was the first time I dealt with depression. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Because you got this hormonal, huge hormonal, mm -hmm. you know, depletion, but you still have those other crazy pregnancy yeah. hormones going on at the same time, mm -hmm. and you're on bed rest, mm -hmm. and the child that yeah. I had just had was was still a baby. Yeah. I couldn't even lift her. Yeah. I had to have people pick her up and put her on my lap so I could love on her. Yeah. So it was real. It's a really hard season. So, and I think the other thing, you know, too, with not knowing, even mm. going back to infertility, is I felt like I disappointed my husband. Mm. You wow. know, I was like, my husband's gonna leave me. Mm. <laughs> you know, because wow. I can't That's have a real. baby. That's real. You know, and I said. You know, that was, I knew that that was something that we both desired, but that was something that I wanted to give to my husband, mm -hmm. you know, and I said, what if I can't have kids? You know, will he still love me the same? You know, will he still, and not to mention, you know, just being transparent when you're dealing with infertility or when you don't know if you can have a child, you know, sex and intimacy becomes a task. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, mm -hmm, if we're just mm -hmm. keeping it real, yes. you know, we, we marry. Yes. <laughs> yes. We marry. That's good. Yes. Um, it becomes a task. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'm ovulating. Come yep. on. Let's yep. get it. Let's get you it. Know? That's right. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah. I think that's the, another piece, the strain that it puts on a marriage. Yes. Um, and while, you know, I, I love my son. And while, Paula, I'm sure you can, you know, mm -hmm. agree with me with your kids. Um, but my marriage is first. Mm. Correct. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, and if, if we're not healthy and if we're not in a good space, mm -hmm. everything else is just put to, to shambles. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. That's mm -hmm. good. And yes. again, I'm glad y'all are here because, again, from a male's perspective, I'm completely oblivious to all yeah. these things. And I think the conversations like this need to, to happen and how I always kind of view things, because like I said, I can't relate. I can't I can't even yeah. imagine to, mm -hmm. to understand what you guys go through and other women go through um, with that um, I think like apologetically where I can see where so many people would be angry at God yeah. you mm. know they would see so many people I, I remember hearing one time where um, I think it was a, a, a pastor a preacher um, he was just talking about how this woman she was just so upset that she couldn't have a child but she would mm. see people in the world who I guess just to be blunt felt like they didn't deserve a kid yeah and mm -hmm. And and she's here like I I'm, I I know I would love this kid yeah. I know I would raise them yeah. knowing God yep. I, I know these things but why are you not blessing me yep. with the child but you're blessing some mm -hmm. this pagan person mm -hmm. yeah. who can care less about you mm -hmm. with multiple children yeah. and they don't even care about yeah. their kids mm -hmm. so I don't know if there's anything that you guys can speak to of of being angry at God yeah I I was never necessarily angry um, I think mine was just more so of asking God if it was my um if it was his will mm -hmm. you know just like single people you know um you know when you're single you know some go through a phase of you know god this is my desire if, is this your will is marriage a ministry for me is this something that you want to walk out mm -hmm. so for me it was the same thing it was okay i'm married but maybe i'm not supposed to be a mother you know what i mean mm -hmm. then there's this ivf conversation Mm -hmm. Right? That's a whole nother yes, <laughs> conversation. Yes. You know, where, you know. That's that, hardcore. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And what is IVF for those? Um, help me. In uh, vitro fertilization. Yes. Okay. In vitro fertilization. yes. And it's yes. costly. Yes. It's very costly. Um, and it, it, there's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. And I've seen so many people yeah. go through IVF, mm -hmm. you know, more than once. Yep. You know, to have those eggs harvested and mm -hmm. then, you know, they plant, implant yep. them and you hope that they take yep. and then mm -hmm. they don't take. And then you go through, a it's a death. Yeah. 
It's mm-hmm. literally a death mm-hmm. that happens. And so the parents grieve for a child. And I know what it's like to grieve for a child you never yeah. even met. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's, there's that piece. And then you want, you know, do we, do we do this? Do we have enough money to do this again? Yeah. Do we have the, the fortitude to go through this again, not knowing, you know, what the, out, like, I, I cannot imagine, mm-hmm. you know, walking in those shoes. Mm-hmm. I cannot imagine walking in those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, and yeah, yeah it, again, still can't imagine just having just to be in that position. And, and like I said, these are difficult conversations mm-hmm. and difficult topics yeah. um, to have. And even talking, because I, I, I think I have heard of in vitro. Is it, yes. is it the embryo that they have or? or I think, mm-hmm. don't quote me, but I think <laughs> it's where they harvest the eggs and then they like mix the egg yeah. with the the, mm-hmm. the sperm in a petri, mm-hmm. petri so it becomes an embryo yeah. Yeah. essentially exactly mm-hmm. and then you're hoping that that fertilized egg will implant yes mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and for whatever reason because it's hostile up in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean the 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 whole trek is just a hostile environment so yeah. the fact that a sperm and an egg actually make it and survive is nothing yeah. short of a miracle yeah, yeah. Like, there are all kinds of acids mm-hmm. that should kill it off. Like, mm-hmm. they do kill off most of the sperm. Yep. So the one sperm that makes it, yeah, like, he's a G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just straight up. <laughs> yes. That's the way that works. <laughs> so, Lee, you got a couple Gs over there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> For those who, who hear Lee, Lee, Lee on the camera. Lee, you in power. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, again, just just wanting to have real and, and open and honest con- honest conversations, and, yeah. and like I said, just talking about in vitro, it it led me to this uh, this this topic of wanting to address the and and I don't like necessarily doing current events, but in those who are paying attention to the climate of of things, um, I know Alabama has like mm. done away with abortions, even if it's in case of incest or rape, and so many people have been up in arms. Um, and even when we're having this conversation about abortion, there's so many misconceptions, um, mm. um, so many voices that are not heard, yeah. so many, you know, uh, those who are on the pro-life, it's always like assumed that just just white evangelical mm. Republicans um, who have the word, uh, last say. And so <laughs> just the, the optics of it just yeah. look really bad of these white men trying to tell me what to do with yeah. my body. Um, and other voices aren't heard and then there's misconceptions about those women who have abortions don't want to be mothers so they're kind of like looked down upon um and not realizing that hey they're in a difficult situation um and again speaking as a man um i can't imagine a woman being in that situation um Mm -hmm. and also at the same time and i don't necessarily want to speak out of turn but i do (laughs) feel like those men who you know impregnate these women where are they? You know, a lot of times mm-hmm. we hear the story is here's three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, where's the responsibility <laughs> that's that's being taken yeah. when you you know do what you do and you understand the consequences and then you're yeah. gone and you leave this woman to fend for herself yeah. and then we're upset that she makes a decision that I guess most and again it's not that it's always uh, people who are, are religious who have a pro life stance mm. um, but then we're looking down upon this woman who who's making who's in a who's forced in a very tough position mm-hmm. um, to make a decision for, for herself. And we hear this other common um, notion is like, you only care about the child in the womb. Mm. You don't care about the child outside of the womb mm-hmm. and, and all these mis- things that, that, that go on. Yeah. And so I wanted to have this opportunity that I've got individual and we all go to, we all have the same world yeah. view. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I also wanted to say this too, just to put my cards um, on the table. I'm not a big fan of, of politics. But I did go to a very conservative school. Most mm. of you um, may know a little bit about Liberty University. Um, and just when you say that for people who are aware, that connotation of just, yeah. just being very conservative, very Republican. Mm. And it, I was in school around the time um, Obama was getting elected, mm. so 08. Mm. And so what I was learning from that worldview is they really pretty much focused on two issues, yeah. um, traditional marriage and pro-life. Yeah. And even though you can make the the biblical argument for, for both of those things, those were like the two main issues and everything else was like secondary. Yeah. Um, and so for me, like it was kind of like, man, if you had this 
was anything other than pro-life. It's like, how can you vote for X, Y, and Z? And as I've grown and mature, mm-hmm. I realized that there's other issues that it's not just as black and white mm-hmm. as we think it is, that there's some gray. And again, just wanting to provide opportunity platform to people share their thoughts, because I don't know where you guys stand on yeah. the issue, um, and realize that there's, there's nuance within people who are Christians who have this worldview yeah. and that we can't just polarize each other and just get mad at yeah. someone and just say, ah, you're just trying to deny a woman's rights or, you yeah. know, or even the reverse. So it, it just wanted to give yeah. you guys an opportunity to, to speak and share your thoughts and, and opinions on, yeah. on the matter. So, so abortion is something <laughs> that I'm very familiar with. I personally have never had um, an abortion, but um, I've been practicing social work for six years and um, I've had multiple clients all the way to age 10 um, who have had abortions. Um, I've had family members who've had abortions. Um, so my experience with it, I think that there are multiple different scenarios that go into play. Um, me personally, um, I do believe that life begins at conception. So I believe that um, if you take a pregnancy test and it's positive, there's life. Um, That's my personal opinion. Um, I think what frustrates me around the climate of America right now is that if you are saved, anything can be redeemed. Anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. So, and I've seen it. So I think that sometimes I think we get caught up in the argument. Mm -hmm. What's theologically correct? Mm -hmm. What's what she has done? The sin that she did? Um, And I think that sometimes we don't extend grace. Mm. And I think that sometimes, and I've seen it, where um, church hurt can cause someone to run to the clinic to get an abortion. Mm. Um, Mm. I think that we as a church have to, you know, we have to do a better job at welcoming people, welcoming the young girls who come in, um, welcoming, you know, teenagers who don't know what to do. Um, You know, I work with homeless youth um, who have been pregnant, sleeping at the laundromat. Miss Harold, what do I do? You know what I mean? So I think that, I just think we have to do a better job at being more graceful Mm -hmm. and not always extending our own personal views, but really doing um, the work of God, really Mm -hmm. doing what Jesus would do. Um, And although I personally disagree, let me get you to some resources. Mm -hmm. Let me try to, you know, I'm 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 gonna share the gospel now. Uh, (laughs) But um, I'm also gonna try to help you. Let's talk about that. Where are you at? How can, you know, what resources can we put into place to take care of the baby? Mm -hmm. You know, let me, you know, call on, you know, so I think that we just gotta do a better job (laughs) at that. Um, And it does frustrate me, you know, when I'm on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, the it's just yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot it's a yeah. lot there yeah. um so yeah well i will start by saying i am absolutely pro-choice mm-hmm. um but also know that god gives each of us free will mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so we can choose and uh pro pro life, not pro choice. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I am pro life. <laughs> it's okay. I am pro life. I was letting you out. I'm pro life. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, Thank diversity. You. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am pro life because God is pro life. Yeah. That is <laughs> That's the elder's wife yeah. talking. <laughs> pro life, pro life, pro life, pro life, pro life. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I am pro life. <laughs> I saw you looking at Lee, and I, I, I must see you making like, a face. Like, why is he mouthing at me? Like, oh, <laughs> yes, I am pro life. <laughs> um, but I do know that God gives everyone yes. free will, so mm-hmm. we can choose. Yeah. Um, and I think that we need to love on people yes. when they're in the place of needing to make a choice. Mm-hmm. And then whatever choice they make, we need to not judge them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because that's what grace is. And, yeah. and, and like you said, anything, God can redeem mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. And although I completely disagree with abortion, yes. mm-hmm. um, I do understand why some people, some, why some mm-hmm. women get it. Mm-hmm. I, like, I, I get it. Yep. Like, if you, like, like for, for the women mm-hmm. who are just sleeping around and, you know, you, you're careless and you mm-hmm. just popping baby after baby, like, Honey, you need to get you need to you need to close mm. your legs. You need to get you need to get a grip. Mm. But I do also understand that there are other cases where there's been rape. Mm-hmm. What what are we doing? You know, in that case, my husband has unequivocally said that if had that ever happened to me, I'm sorry, 
I'm not raising another man's baby. Mm. So what you know, mm. what do you, what is a woman supposed to do with that? Mm. Yeah. You know, or there have been cases you uh, you know, you mentioned earlier that the guy, you know, give her three hundred dollars and go his way, but there have been young men who are like, I want my child and the girl's like, No mm. and she goes anyway. Mm. What is what is he supposed to do with that? Yeah. You know, so there are a lot of scenarios. There are a lot of things that go in, yes. you know, that play mm-hmm. into this that I think we have to be mindful of and not just jump on a girl because she's like, well, I'm just getting an abortion. Correct. You mm-hmm. know, because that sounds not any different than, well, I'm just going to watch porn or mm-hmm. I'm just going to go, yeah. you know, do whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's still going against what God's perfect plan yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that we have to lovingly, mm-hmm. you know, try to coerce, lovingly inform, mm-hmm. lovingly resource mm-hmm. with the understanding that not everybody's going to make the decision that we're presenting, yeah. that we're offering, you know, and, and I would hate that. I would hate to see a girl do mm-hmm. that. I w- and I, you know, I know people who have, and I, mm-hmm. and I hate that, but I love them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to realize that that's what we have to do because it's not easy to make that choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've heard plenty of women who've made that choice and the regret that you live with day after day, that when the birthday comes back mm-hmm. around every mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or you've had complications and now for whatever you're married and now you can't have kids because it jacked you up. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of things that go into this. I yeah. don't, I don't think that is, I don't think, think that women make that choice yeah. lightly and so for them to go to a clinic and be badgered mm-hmm. by us Christians mm-hmm. I don't think that's a good idea yep. I think there's a better way mm-hmm. you know to do that now I know mm-hmm. that there are Christians who lovingly come along that are at the oh, clinics yeah. who are yeah. very loving oh, and yeah. you know I know some you mm-hmm. know who do that um, and it's been effective mm-hmm. even if those yep. women have said oh I, well, I am going to have the baby and I'll give it up yep. you know mm-hmm. that that's yes. kind of what we want to offer yes you know, mm-hmm. to them. So I think that it's how we do it. Yes, I'm pro-life, but I'm not going to beat nobody up, yep. you know, if they choose to do that. Mm-hmm. So, And there's the other part, too, of the hyper grace, you know, of <clears throat> Jesus loves us all. And, you know, while mm-hmm. he does, you know, it's just kind of like there's also this hyper grace component as well of, girl, get as many abortions you want to, mm-hmm. you know, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I think just trying to find that balance. Um, and really trying to, you know, live out. I think, you know, me and my husband were having a conversation the other day um, because Judah is in a literacy program over the summer. And in one of the books that we were reading, um, it was talking about the different dynamics of a family. And in one of the pages um, it had, um, it was like, you know, some people, you know, have a dad. Some people, you know, have a grandmother. And then on one of the pages it said, you know, some children have two mothers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me and my husband stopped. And we were like, uh, where did this book come from? I remember when that book came out. I remember when it came like, out. Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. But in, even in that moment, um, I think we were both so quick to be like, oh, my God, why is this in this book? Mm. When more so you know we should have been coming from the perspective of while there are some homes who do have two mothers and there are children um they also need to hear the gospel as well and their hearts can you know hopefully be changed so i think that sometimes you know we really have to remove our own personal biases that's good um and really step out and you know even though it's hard and uncomfortable um you know if we really want to see the world you know, the way that, you know, Jesus would want to see the world. We got to do the work. Yeah. So. I think if, if we can see, if we can choose to see people the way God sees mm-hmm. them, um, I think it's a lot yes. easier because my husband will tell you, I, I really don't struggle with that when I see people who have alternative lifestyles or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to mm-hmm. engage you in conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's because you're, you're a person. Mm-hmm. You're just a person to me. That Humanity. You're making mm-hmm. a choice that I don't agree with. And if that conversation comes up, I'm going to let you know I don't agree with what you're doing. Yeah. But we can still have a conversation. Why can't yeah. you talk? You're like, mm-hmm. you're a person. You know, mm-hmm. I got stuff too, yeah. you know, that somebody mm-hmm. might not like that is sinful. Yeah. So I don't feel like we um, have the luxury of excluding and shunning Correct. just because Correct. someone doesn't present or believe or whatever, yeah. you know, like I do. Yeah. You know, now if you come incorrect, you got to <laughs> hold up the issue. <laughs> but as long as we can have a civil conversation, I, I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I, I'm glad I, I wanted to have that conversation because I don't I didn't know where you guys stood. I assume just because we all go to the same church and you know, it's pretty good doctrinally. Yeah. But I assume there's people within our church who may not share a pro life view. Mm-hmm. And, and it may be. Yeah. And and it, mm-hmm. and it may yeah. be. And I think as you grow and you mature, you can understand that that doesn't you're not supposed to question their, their Christianity or whatever right. um, it is. And and so even though, um, yeah, I know you had to pause and make sure you said it correctly. <laughs> I don't want anyone listening to think, hey, if I have this other view that we, you know, looking down on you. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I think the common denominator mm-hmm. that I heard from both of you is this idea of, of grace. Yep. And I, I would assume that you guys have people in your lives who are believers who had abortion. Mm-hmm. I know two people that I know of yes. um, who are believers who are pro-life, but when you face with that decision, it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, it's a real life decision and we really know how to show grace, really know how to show empathy and we're just screaming at people. And like you said, mm-hmm. viewing them as Jesus yeah. viewed them mm-hmm. and Christians, we have such a, a, a bad rap for that. And cause I don't know if we even realize most of us are known for what we're against as Christians instead of what we're for. Yes. Mm-hmm. You brought this up earlier, mm-hmm. adoption. Yeah. Christians, I think, are probably one of the highest percentage of people who adopt. Mm-hmm. Christians mm-hmm. are not known mm-hmm. for adoption. Yep. We're more wow. known for screaming and, and badgering yeah. people That's not to good. get abortions. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, that, that mm-hmm. shouldn't. And I hate to put it in terms of like business and yeah. marketing. Yeah. But it's like. Why is that not held to the mm-hmm. forefront that, no, we, 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 un, we've been adopted. Mm-hmm. So we understand wow. the value mm-hmm. um, of adoption, but yep. more often than not, we're just known for just, you know, mm-hmm. screaming up, you're going to hell. And then yep. they got the pictures of the baby mm-hmm. cut out. And it's like, yeah. who are you winning? Mm-hmm. You right. know, you're not like, yeah. all you're doing Correct. is pushing the people Correct. away. And, and even the, just the thing about Jesus, like he didn't just care about someone's spiritual health. He cared about a person holistically. Yes. And mm-hmm. I feel as Christians, we we don't. We just care. Are you going to hell? You know, and that's yeah. what we care about. It's like you've got to. There's a way to talk to people, there is. and mm-hmm. we don't know how to talk to people as as um, Christians. And this debate, because like you said, it really isn't a debate when you no. when you really mm-hmm. think about it. Because you know, I, I like to fight. I'm more power to the people who try. Because for so many people, they're like, this is such a victory. Mm. I didn't really view it as that yeah. big of a victory. For me, it's like this is not my home. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So it's like, I, like. I, maybe I'm too cynical when it comes mm. to to that, but it's like the world does is does not worship God. Yeah, this we're just passing through. Mm. So when the mm-hmm. world is acting contrary to what Scripture says, it's just doing what Scripture yeah. has said. We should you expect know? it. We're on yeah. this is the mission field, right? So it's like the people who need the grace most yeah. are those in the LGBT community. Yes, those mm-hmm. who are you mm-hmm. know pro-choice. Those are the people who need the most grace, mm. and it's like we just push them further and further mm-hmm. away from us when it's like. God is like that's your mission field mm-hmm. right there right, right there um, yeah, that, I wouldn't want home. it like if, if you come at me like that and I'm a believer yeah, yeah. like I don't want to I don't want have anything to do with you so we have to realize that we need to approach people the way we would want to be mm-hmm. approached and like when Jesus mm-hmm. approached a woman at the well mm-hmm. if you really think about it he told mm-hmm. her about herself mm-hmm. but how did he do yeah. it yeah is the question yeah. you know he was like yeah I know about your life but he he engaged her mm-hmm. first in a way that she felt mm-hmm. like she could respond like she mm-hmm. questioned him first like like yeah. what are you doing talking to me you know but mm-hmm. he broke down those defenses mm-hmm. in a way that she could hear him mm-hmm. and then she was changed because because of that and i think we can break down defenses by by being loving mm-hmm. you know like we can we see what you i see what you yep. are i know who you are mm-hmm. But if I love you, I break down your defenses yeah. and now we can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And it may not happen right that moment. Mm-hmm. It may happen over time. Mm-hmm. But we have to build trust. You know, people have to be able to see us as a human yeah. being and not just the Christian. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if that's yeah. what we're wearing, don't nobody want that. Yeah. So we have to watch that. And I think we also, too, have to do, you know, in spaces of faith, we have to be more active in state legislation. We have to mm-hmm. be more active in doing things on more of a micro level because mm-hmm. uh, that's where the change is. That's true. So if we have all these teenage mothers and we know that that's a, you know, an issue in Wake County or Durham, then why aren't there more, you know, residential, you know, resources for those, mm-hmm. um, you know, for those girls? Why aren't there, you know, why is it, you know, just always we're going to take, take, take from the community? What about pouring into the community by creating mm-hmm. those resources? Mm-hmm. So I think that that's, that's another practical way of looking at it, that even if you remove faith, 
we're talking about basic humanity. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we, we just have to, as a, in America, we just have to get to that, that mm -hmm. space. I mean, if you think about it, like mm -hmm. my brother works for the um, Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of them are not believers. No. Mm -mm. But what are they doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going into places that we don't want to go. Yeah. And yeah. they are loving on people yeah, in a way are. that we don't want to love. Yeah. And so, the, truth be told, they're putting a lot of us to shame. Mm -hmm. So we need to change the, the narrative. Mm -hmm. We need to change the action yeah. that, we're, that we're presenting. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and it kind of brings us um, full circle because you were just talking about just valuing people as, as human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to the identity piece that we see that each and every person is made in the image of God. Yeah. And that's first and foremost where we find mm -hmm. our identity in that Imago Dei, in that image of God. And as a mother, as you know, a mm -hmm. wife, that's the first thing yeah. you see. I'm, I'm an image bearer and I get to just see that outward in these different areas of life. And even talking about this topic of, of abortion, that these individuals are made in the image of God. We may yes. disagree with their yes. decision, but mm -hmm. they still are in need mm -hmm. of redemption. They're yes. still in need of mm -hmm. grace and, and reconciliation. And, and like I said, so oftentimes we, we kind of have the stigma of someone who who's getting an abortion as less than, yes. you know, mm -hmm. as they don't value what it is to be a mother. And that's mm -hmm. not the case. They just faced with a difficult decision and yeah. they feel that's their only mm -hmm. alternative. Only way. And as people mm -hmm. who, who do have an understanding yeah. of who God is and the grace that's been shown to us, it's like, this is prime opportunity yeah. to show grace mm -hmm. to, to other people. So I, like I said, I appreciate the conversation. Never know what's going to happen going <laughs> in, going into these things, but you guys, you guys did, did um, a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And I didn't, I didn't know before we wrapped up, if there's anything that you guys wanted to say in closing um, or, or any comments, anything? <laughs> I just want to say thank you for, yeah. you know, allowing us to share our thoughts mm -hmm. and views and opinions and our faith ultimately um, with whoever's watching, yeah. Um, yeah. but particularly the moms, because this is about moms. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, my prayer is that for anyone who is listening, that if you can take one thing that yeah. we have said that makes your life better as a mom, mm -hmm. then we have done what God has commissioned yeah. us to do. Mm -hmm. So that would be my prayer and yeah. it would be my joy as yeah. well. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and I think that, I guess something I would say is just, you know, um, motherhood is imperfect. Mm -hmm. You know, it's imperfect. It's a it's a learning curve. I'm sure you know Paula can. Mm. She's had seven kids, and <laughs> she's still obviously a curve. yeah, it's still a learning <laughs> curve. Um, but there's no book um, that's going to teach you how to be a mother. But mm. there is a book that'll teach you how to love. Yeah. Yes. Um, and ask somebody. Yeah. If you see if if you're a mom and you see somebody who is mothering the way you want to mother, yes. and you feel like you're missing the mark, yeah, pull them aside and ask them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see somebody uh, like your child, when I see kids in the grocery store who are undisciplined, I want to mm -hmm. snatch the, the parent. Mm -hmm. I don't want to snatch the kid. I want to snatch the parent. <laughs> yeah. Because you you haven't figured out what you need to do mm -hmm. for this child not to be leading you yeah. in the grocery store. That's good. And so there's a way. There is absolutely a way. I used to take all of my kids to the grocery store when I yeah. would go and my husband would say why are you taking them all and I said because I want them to know how to act when we're in public if they mm. stay home I'm gonna stay at home mom but we don't stay home mm, if good. I keep yeah. them in the house they don't know how to act in public I yeah. need them to know how yeah. to come when I say come yeah. go when I say go uh, speak when people speak to you this is a stranger this is how far you go if I say don't go up underneath that 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 clothing rack and I pinch your arm and twist it and you do the silent scream you understand we're not doing that again you know, oh, yes ma'am <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> and I believe in spanking in the store if you act up in the store I spank you in the store I was gonna ask you yeah. that because mm -hmm. I think that especially in um, the black community um, when you say discipline, we immediately think of a beating. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I know. A spanking. Sorry. <laughs> well, um, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Both of them. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, that's something, too, that, um, you know, child abuse and neglect. I think that that, too, is something that's not also talked about as well mm -hmm. um, with being a mother. Mm -hmm. 
I think yeah. that, um, you know, a lot of, even with, you know, DSS, Department of Social Services, um, a lot of the rates and the percentages that they see are with young moms that mm -hmm. don't have the skills, right. lack of education, they yes. don't know how to discipline. Yes. Um, you know, they're often single moms. And they're tired, um, frustrated, yes. and angry. They have multiple mm -hmm. children. There's financial hardship. Um, and so I think that, too, if we had more of a platform to talk about, how do you lovingly discipline your child? Yes. How do you lovingly yes. do that? Um, I mean, you know, different people mm -hmm. have different perspectives on spanking and beating and, yeah. you know, all of that type of stuff. Um, so, yeah. And that is something mm -hmm. that um, I actually do talk about in, in my book as oh. well, because... Um, there, there is a. I feel like there's a misunderstanding, mm -hmm. like you're you're saying about spanking versus beating. Yeah. The whole idea is discipline. Yes, mm -hmm. is spanking can be a component, mm -hmm. but not even for every child. Each one of my children got a different form of discipline because mm -hmm. the purpose is to go after the heart, mm -hmm. not to break the spirit of the mm -hmm. child. And so, if you mm -hmm. are spanking a child whose heart is really tender and all you have to do is say don't do that yeah. and you spank them you crush them mm -hmm. so you That's have true. to know mm -hmm. each one of your children and yeah. know what that discipline needs to look like per child yeah. per incident yeah. and there are times where some of the stuff they did was really funny mm -hmm. and we were laughing that's not a good time to discipline either because now they've seen that you think it's funny. So there's mm -hmm. a whole, whole, that's a whole nother, mm -hmm. you know, conversation. What did, what should discipline look like? But yeah. in Proverbs, um, we are commanded to discipline because mm -hmm. the rod of correction will drive hell far from them. Mm -hmm. And I want hell driven mm -hmm. from each one of my children. Mm -hmm. And that means I have a responsibility to discipline them. So here's the thing. If I don't correct my child now, mm -hmm. the law is going to correct them later. Mm -hmm. I love them. Mm -hmm. So my correction is loving. Mm -hmm. The law don't care. And I made sure that my children understood that. Mm -hmm. Like, I am spanking you because I love you. Mm -hmm. And I want to see you be a, um, a, a citizen who mm -hmm. offers, who is a contributor to society and mm -hmm. not a taker. Mm -hmm. And so I will spank you. Mm -hmm. And they understood that. That's keeping them from the hands of someone who could care less mm -hmm. about their lives or their soul. So I think if we understand what discipline is and what it is for, mm -hmm. I think it would make all the difference. Mm -hmm. And don't discipline when you're tired. Mm -hmm. Don't discipline when um, out, of, out of anger. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't discipline out of anger. Mm -hmm. A child feels that. Mm -hmm. They know that. Mm -hmm. And then you watch what you use to discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's going to work? Is sitting in a corner going to work? Mm -hmm. Because if that if that's what the punishment works for this particular mm -hmm. child, then use that. Mm -hmm. You know, use the least means possible mm -hmm. to, to to corral their heart back. Because mm -hmm. we're pointing, as believers, we're pointing them to a savior. That's yeah. our whole goal for everything we do: discipline, love, reading, right, feeding, changing diapers. Is is pointing them to a savior? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we can see it that way, we can wrap our brains around mm -hmm. that. I think it makes a difference in how we raise our children. Yeah. And like I said, just 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 blown away about just the content that you guys were able to, to give. And so I'm so grateful that, number one, that y'all wanted to come mm -hmm. and, and do this. Absolutely. Because this is only possible because because of, uh, of you guys. And, and I also will say this too, Brandon. This is something that we did not talk about. But mothers of children with disabilities. Mm. Um, that just kind of came to yeah. me. Um, but... That's also something. Yes, it is. That's a, a different area. Yes, it is. Um, that we don't talk about or discuss. Mm -hmm. You know, children with significant disabilities. Um, and or mental illness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that I, I wish that there was more support around that, yeah. too. You know, of, um, you know, no one really will know what that's like unless you have that experience on your own. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, seeing it and working with, you know, um, that population versus actually being it myself. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking about, you know, for a future podcast episode. Well, um, I might have y'all back. So. <laughs> I think that would be great right. for a future podcast right. episode. As an older um, mom at our church, uh -huh. which is just, that is just funny to me, but um, I am. Um, I, I feel responsible mm -hmm. for you younger moms. I really do. <laughs> and so if I see something, yeah. I'm going to say something. Yeah. I'm going to be loving, but I'm going to yeah. say something. And there have been a couple of moms where I'm like, I really think you need to have the doctor see this one. Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll say, oh, really, Miss Paula? I was wondering. I'm like, 
just 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 have let them tell you just have a visit mm. you know because i i can see the struggle and if i see a mom yeah. struggling i'm i'm going to i'm going to say something yeah. you know because and I want the moms in our congregation to understand. Yeah. And most of them who know me know that, you know, you can, come, you can come to me, you can call me. There have been times where I've just, you know, we've gone to dinner, we have a powwow. Um, we used to go to homes and mm-hmm. I just let them, you know, hit me with questions. That's what they wanted to do. Yeah. Like, can we meet at a home and you come and we just ask you questions? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like. I'm I'm a resource. Mm -hmm. I'm a dinosaur. (laughs) dinosaur. I'm a resource. (laughs) So use me. Use me. That's what I'm here. I didn't go through everything I went through just for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sitting here just thinking about all the different scenarios. You know, mothers of children who are incarcerated. Mothers Mm -hmm. are, you know. and that too. Yeah, and I think that that's, it speaks to motherhood. There is no one definition. You know, it's. It's vague. It's gray. It's it looks um, different from yeah. It looks next. different, you know. Um, so yeah. Nah, like I said, I, I'm just blown away because <laughs> I'm I'm so busy set, preparing, setting up, just like because I literally came up with my list like, like right before, <laughs> wow. five minutes before we in, and I'm like, I hope we can get something out of this. Um, and and it was phenomenal. You asked the questions. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was really good. So I appreciate you guys coming through Absolutely. to share, just being able just to be open and vulnerable yeah. and just just share just real things. Because even with uh, before you guys came here and the elderly was just saying, just wanting to have real conversation, not surface level mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. because people are looking for answers. Yes. People want to mm-hmm. see that transparency, and and that's why I call it you're doing it wrong because we don't get it right all the time. Yeah. But as Christians, we want to put on this facade mm-hmm. like we've got it all together, and, and we don't. Yeah. And it's not simply for the sake of saying, hey, I don't have it together, but for the sake of growth. Mm-hmm. And that's why we need each other. And me personally, I just like just being in isolation, but you can't grow in isolation that you need True. other ideas. You need people who yeah. think differently mm-hmm. from you, who have mm-hmm. different experiences than you so that you can you can learn and you can grow. And so I, I'm, I'm so appreciative yeah. um, for you guys um, coming mm-hmm. through. I'm very excited. Yeah, like I said, man, I didn't. Yeah, we we got we got some really good, really <laughs> good it. stuff. Um, so for those of you guys who are listening, I hope you you enjoyed and like I said, got something from it, um, and just just see their hearts. And I know you you have uh, a ministry coming. To mind. I know if you wanted to plug that, plug your website, plug oh, anything absolutely. like that. Please do it. Please do it. <laughs> um, so as previously discussed, um, I am the founder of the Bonafide Wife, and we are a community um, of wives who um, keep it real, mm-hmm. um, but also so I'm um, giving God glory through our marriage and um, you can find out more information about that community at www.thebonafidewife.com um, so we are also starting quarterly meetups um, the first meetup is this Saturday um, and um, I'm also going to be having a conference on next year um, so I'm really excited about that so yeah, please uh, check out Shanetta. She's doing just great work, and like I so said, you can just see her her love and her passion um, for 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 wives and, and mothers. And she's definitely a great, great resource. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully, we'll be with you guys uh, next month. Yo, my world don't stop when the beats commence. Said I'm climbing up this ladder just to get over this fence and run. Far, far away from the games people play. In this melancholy modern day music, Malay, touche. Pussy cats with lives to spare. That kick you know in your heart, nice as hell. Yeah. Be aware, beware. I hate to see your lesson level or worse. Polar bear with the time, catch the river. Now that's cold. And like that, now that's old. Didn't buy the last copy of this, now that's sold. This the pepper on your salt, my dudes, I grind it out. And the answer to the questions of life, I find it out. Who that stress? I walk with access. Be he who access.